Welcome, dear friend, to my channel. As you might have already read, my channel is about helping medical students understand some basic topics in the medical sciences. Today, I'm going to take the first lecture on a series of lectures I'll be conducting. Today, we are going to look at metabolism of brand chain amino acids. Now, when we talk about metabolism, it's basically the breaking down of substances or building up of substances. The branching amino acids in health and disease are three. Now, when we talk about branching amino acids, we are basically talking about amino acids that have a branch aliphatic side chain. And we have three of them. They are alin, leucine, Isoleucine. I use the acronym VLI for these three branching amino acids of health and disease. Now, we are going to look at the metabolism of these branching amino acids. In the metabolism of these branching amino acids, we are going to look at three major steps in the metabolism. The first one is Transamination. The second is oxidative decarboxylation. And the last is dehydrogenation. There are important enzymes that are responsible for each of these steps. Now we are going to look at the three branching amino acids and then look at their metabolism at a go. So let's start off quickly. Now bear in mind that at the end of this first series, I'm going to talk about some clinical correlations of deficiencies of some of these important branching amino acids. Now we are going to look at it in this form. The first one we are going to look at is leucine. Then look at valine and isoleucine. Now remember initially we talked about the fact that the first step Looking at three steps, decarboxylation, oxidative, sorry, transamination, oxidative, decarboxylation, and dehydrogenation. For the first step, which is now transamination, we are going to use specific enzymes called aminotransferases or transaminases. Now, for each of these branching amino acids, you have a specific amino transferase which will catalyze this reaction. So, it's very simple. It's a transaminase, and then you add the name of the branching amino acid to it. So, with leucine, we have leucine amino transferase. For valine, we have valine amino transferase. And then isoleucine, we have isoleucine amino transferase. So let's go through that quickly. Now, the enzymes are going to act on these amino acids. So for leucine, like I said, we have leucine amino transferase. Valine, we have valine amino transferase. And then for isoleucine, we have isoleucine amino transferase. Now when Leucine amino transferase acts on leucine. We are going to get a compound called alpha keto capric acid. Now, for valine, we are going to have alpha keto valeric acid. And finally, for isoleucine, 
that is acted on by the enzyme acid leucine amino transferase. We are going to have alpha keto 3 metal glutamate. So we are done with the first step, which is transamination. Let's quickly move on to the next, which is oxidative decarboxylation. So from here, we move to oxidative decarboxylation. Now, the enzyme that is responsible for catalyzing this step, they are generally called alpha keto acid dehydrogenases because check the name the first part of the name here you have alpha keto alpha keto alpha keto so it makes sense that the enzyme's name is an alpha keto acid because we have acid here and then dehydrogenase now remember in the lectures we had we talked about some dehydrogenases like when we're looking at the Krebs cycle we talked about alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase and we saw that that particular enzyme required specific coenzymes that are needed to enhance its activity. This alpha keto acid dehydrogenase also requires those coenzymes. So alpha keto dehydrogenase. So alpha keto dehydrogenase will act on these substrates for all of them. Now, when alpha keto dehydrogenase acts on alpha keto capric acid, what are we going to get? We're going to get a compound called isovaleryl CoA or valine as the substrate. What are we going to have? We are going to have iso. Butyryl CoA and for alpha keto 3 metal glutamate, when the alpha keto acid dehydrogenase acts on this, we are going to get 3 metal butyryl. Now the final aspect, which is dehydrogenation. That's the final step. We are going to finally dehydrogenate these compounds. Now, when we dehydrogenate isovaleryl A, we are going to get acetal CoA. Now, for isobutyryl CoA, when we dehydrogenate it, we are going to get propionyl CoA. But for isoleucine, you can both get, as when we dehydrogenate the 3 metal butyryl, we are going to get both acetal CoA and propionyl. For A, why is that so? That is because even though they are all branched in amino acids, they belong to a specific group. They can be classified into subgroups. We have ketogenic amino acids and glucogenic amino acids. Glucogenic amino acids are simply amino acids that can be metabolized to give us glucose. And then the ketogenic ones, of course, we metabolize them to get what? Ketone bodies. So, leucine here is a ketogenic. Leucine is a ketogenic amino acid. That means it can be metabolized to give us ketone bodies. Valine is a glucogenic acid, yeah, amino acid. That means that the final product can be metabolized to give us glucose. That you can get um, glucose or energy from it. Now, isoleucine is both ketogenic and then glucogenic amino acid. Now, this is basically the metabolism pathway for 
leucine, valine, and then isoleucine. The acetal CoA that is produced here can go into fatty acid synthesis and then eventually lead to the production of energy. Now, propionyl CoA can be converted to succinyl CoA, which will enter the Krebs cycle and also help to generate energy. Acetal CoA and then propionyl CoA, of course, as we discussed earlier, will all help us to get energy. But we've already looked at acetal CoA as entering the fatty acid pathway. But one important thing I want us to take note of is propionyl CoA. Let's quickly go through the metabolic pathway of propionyl CoA. How do we finally get energy from propionyl CoA? Now, this will be very quick. Now, propionyl CoA. Now, the propionyl CoA that is, of course, obtained from the metabolism of isoleucine and then valine can be acted on by an enzyme we call propionyl CoA carboxylate. Now, if you hear carboxylate, that means carbon dioxide is being added. Now, this enzyme requires biotin, a coenzyme called actually vitamin, acting as a coenzyme called biotin. Now, when this enzyme acts on propionyl CoA, what we get is a compound called D-methylmalonyl CoA. Now the D-methylmalonyl CoA is converted to L-methyl Malonyl CoA. Now, this is done by an enzyme called methyl myelonyl racemase. So, it's a racemase. It's a racemase. Here. And then finally, the L methyl myelonyl CoA will be converted to succinyl CoA by an enzyme we call methyl malona CoA mutase. Now in this enzyme also requires vitamin B12 to work very well. Now this is now CoA as we know of course can enter into the Krebs cycle and then we know that it will be converted to succinate and from succinate we go to fumarate and then malate and eventually oxaloacetate. Now as we go along, FADH2 and then NADH will be generated which can move into the electron transport chain and then help us to generate some ATPs. So that is why how this can actually help us to generate energy. So we are basically now done with the metabolism of the branch chain amino acid. The next thing I'd like us to look at simply is the clinical correlations. What are some of the medical conditions that can arise as a result of improper metabolism of some of these amino acids? Now, the first one I want to look at is M sheet. Now, for M sheet disease, we stand for maple syrup urine disease. Maple syrup urine disease. For maple syrup urine disease, the reason why we call it maple syrup is that usually when you have this, your urine tastes like maple syrup or burnt sugar. Now, you experience these medical conditions when you are unable to basically metabolize the branch in amino acids. That inability to metabolize. The branch in amino acids. I'm going to use BIT to represent them. So, valine, isoleucine, and sorry, and then leucine, BIL. Okay. So, when you are unable to metabolize this uh, branch in amino acids, is that okay? That is basically due to the fact that you lack alpha keto acid dehydrogenases. 
think of some of the things that can happen. We know that these branching amino acids will eventually give us precursors that will enter the various pathways to generate energy. So, the person is likely to have cases of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia, and then another very important medical condition called to acidosis that's accumulation of um, ketone bodies okay now to do with MC um, the best possible way of managing this disease and remember it is could lead to hypoglycemia and then ketoacidosis now it can also affect the brain since you lack alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, and the brain uh, will not actually function as it's supposed to function. Okay, now a case of um, hypoglycemia is going to critically affect the brain because the brain needs a lot of glucose to be able to generate energy. So, people with M should have um, degraded mental ability, retarded mental ability. And remember, it is also. An autosomal recessive disease. Now, how do we treat patients that have MC? Now, the most potent treatment for this disease is actually regulating the diet of the individual. Okay, um, to make sure that they don't have these um, branching amino acids, or maybe just in a small amount in the diet, so that they wouldn't have to metabolize it. Now. Recently, it has also been proven that you can also do liver transplant for these patients, or in patients that have it can also be finished, can also be hemodialysis. So that's it for the first clinical correlation. Now, the second one we are going to talk about is opionic acidemia. Apoponic acidemia. So, simply is accumulation of propionyl CoA. So, you accumulate or there is increase in propionyl CoA. You rely from the metabolism that um, the end product of metabolism of valine you actually get propionyl CoA, which can be converted to succinyl CoA. Okay. Now. This propionyl CoA has to be converted to uh, methylmalonyl CoA by an enzyme called propionyl carboxylase. So propionyl CoA carboxylase. So this will do the convection, help us to so that eventually we'll get uh, methylmalonyl CoA. And remember, I said that this depends on biotin. So, propionyl CoA acted on my propionyl CoA carboxylase to give us a methylmalonyl CoA. But in the case where you lack either this enzyme or biotin, like the biotin acts as the coenzyme, that means that you, your body will not be able to convert propionyl CoA to methylmalonyl CoA. So, in that case, you have accumulation of what? Propionyl CoA. An accumulation of propionyl CoA in the body is what we call propionic acidemia. Now, in this medical condition, um, you have a lot of propionyl CoA in your system, and that can go a long way to lead to hypoglycemia, as we saw in the, in the first case. You have hypoglycemia. And then you also have hypermonemia, that increase in amino acid ammonia in your body. Okay. Now, increasing 
So penal co A will also affect the activities of succinyl co A synthase, which is an enzyme in the Krebs cycle. So increasing propionyl co A will actually inhibit. So increasing propionyl co A inhibits succinyl co A synthase. So basically, when an individual has this disease, um, it is also an autosomal recessive disease. So they're basically going to regulate the person's diet. Uh, but if it is caused a result of lack of biotin, then you just give the person um, food that contain biotin uh, to help the person recover. Now let's quickly look at the next clinical correlation. Now that's methyl malonyl acidine Methyl malonyl acidemia, or basically, you have an increasing amount of uh, methyl malonyl CoA. Why? So, just like we saw in the reaction earlier, when you have an increasing amount of methyl malonyl CoA, that is mostly due to what? Lack of methyl malonyl mutase, an enzyme that converts it to succinyl CoA. So you have increasing amount of methyl malonyl CoA, and uh, this increasing amount of methyl malonyl CoA can also lead to hypoglycemia, and then also cause uh, ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis. Now, it can also affect another important enzyme in. Another pathway we looked at some time ago like in the course of our studies. So, increasing amount of methyl malonyl, increasing amount of methyl malonyl CoA due to the absence of methyl malonyl CoA due to the conversion to methyl CoA will result into hypoglycemia. Because it's not where it cannot um, actually go into the grape cycle to help it generate energy. Now, increasing amount of methyl malonyl CoA will affect pyruvate carboxylase, an important enzyme in gluconeogenesis that converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate. So, if you have increasing methyl malonyl CoA, it will inhibit the activities of pyruvate. Pyruvate carboxylase. So that is how you can uh, lead to hypoglycemia. Now, the other conditions we will we'll, we'll talk about, uh, now we'll go deep into is isovaleric acidemia. So isovaleric CoA, which you came across when we're looking at, at the metabolism of leucine. So isovaleryl uh, um, CoA is increasing, so that means you probably also don't have the uh, alpha keto acid dehydrogenase for um, isovaleric isovaleryl CoA. So you need to accumulation of this. Thank you very much. We have come to the end of the first of our series of lectures on metabolism of the next time we'll bring you another on metabolism of histidine, another important amino acid. Stay tuned and thank you very much.